this is Sir Tap Tap, and welcome back to Terraria. We're going to go in this direction because, if I recall correctly, the last cave ended up in a dead end. Generally speaking, when you hit a dead end in this game, you can look around and you can find another passageway. That is another thing I really like about this game as opposed to Minecraft. When you hit a dead end in Minecraft, there may be like a gigantic room in the next you know, just one wall segment away, but you'd never know it. You can see through walls just slightly in this game, so, you know, it's a lot easier to find stuff like that. Not even sure what I got out of those pots, but I broke them. So, yeah, um, if you find a dead end, you can either just dig a little down, or just, you know, bring a torch around to all the walls and see... Um, somewhere around there, there should be, you know, another chamber. If you pick a small world to start on, the chambers are usually all within one screen's width of each other. I should probably leave the monsters alone, but I won't. Yeah, he would not be... I think I mentioned this. That slime would not be still attacking me if I hadn't hit him, and I really had no reason to. But I'm a douchebag like that, so I decided to kill him. These slimes, on the other hand, I'm just going to ignore. They, I think, just keep hopping in the same direction until they hit a wall, unless you interrupt them. Also, sand. Be careful when you break sand because it falls down and it can hurt you if it falls down on you. You can also use that as a makeshift weapon, but it's really awkward. Just know that don't stand immediately next to falling sand. Because it can't hurt you if you're a little too close. It's especially effective if there's like a huge ladder of sand. Or not ladder. Aw oh, shit. We found the corruption! Oh shit! Um, hello. Oh dear. This is called the corruption. The funny thing about swords is that since they have such higher... Um, they're so much slower, I'm not really sure my sword would even do more damage per second than this pick would do against this monster. Oh my god! Run. Okay, so these are called Soul Eaters. That purple grassy area, oh my god, I'm gonna die, is called the Corruption. It spreads purple grass and it spawns much harder monsters, like these guys, Eaters of Souls. They're not really that hard of enemies, but currently... They deal a lot of damage to me, and I deal basically none to them. I'll be amazed if I can make it- I can't make it back to home. Yeah, they also fly, so... Pretty hard to deal with flying enemies with crappy weapons. Um, especially since my sword. It deals just enough knockback to make hurting them really annoying. I guess it makes me safer, but it's so slow. I just don't even care. So yeah, we're gonna pretend that never happened. I did get a little bit of copper. Oh, a very little bit, actually. Well, that's unfortunate. I had hoped to find another cave, but I guess we're just gonna walk around like a moron for a while. Also, if I had a grappling hook, I could get up there really easy. I can still get up there thanks to the power of platforms, though. There we go. And the fun thing is once you place a platform, you can place platforms beneath it. So you can make little ladders like this. It's uh, not easy, but it is an alternative to using the grappling hook for situations like this. And it's reusable, so it makes your life easier in the future, whereas grappling hooks, you know, it's just a one-time thing. Oh, by the way, this is clay. Um, you can Clay just looks like different colored dirt. Plants won't grow on it, though. Clay is only used for making red bricks, um, and I think you can make brick any kind of. You can make the background walls out of brick too if you want to make a nice brick house. But that's the only reason you would need brick or clay. It's not nearly as rare as it is in Minecraft, and it's a lot easier to find. There's, uh, there's clay pretty much everywhere. Underground, anywhere there's dirt, there can be a small amount of clay mixed in. And you can see it right here. It's just a bit more reddish. It's not that hard to uh, notice clay. 
I'm gonna need some more platforms. This is why I always carry lots of wood in, with me in this game. It's similar to Minecraft in that wood pretty much always comes in a little bit of handy. Also, I'm gonna cut down some of these trees because they're pretty tall. Taller trees, since trees get cut down by one block, um, taller trees give you the most wood per, uh, you know, time unit. So if I see big trees, I just kill them. I'm, I'm a very anti-environmental person like that. Like, hey, this tree's probably been here for a long time. Let's kill it. Let's kill that shit up good. Alrighty. Um, the trees grow kind of weirdly in this game. Actually, I'm not sure how they grow at all. They pretty much just sprout up, um, well, when the world generates, they sprout up instantly. And when you plant them, I don't know what they do. My planted, no matter what, my planted, uh, shrubs, not shrubs, uh, saplings, never grow very tall. They never grow at all, to my knowledge, anyway. And what's probably happening is, you know, you probably need like three blocks or more of space on grass and level ground and stuff. I may just not have been doing that properly. This is the best cave I've ever experienced. Well, oh, and someone uh, told me, by the way, with the, uh, the pots, I previously said what's in them depends on the biome. I guess that's not quite true. I think they, um, well, at least they told me that they give you the same stuff no matter what. There we go. Ah, you stupid butt face. So, in my experience, they give you a lot better stuff when you're in a dungeon. I'm not sure if that's true or not. We're going to scope this out really quick here. It doesn't look like it's a real cave. I also love the vines growing underwater. I, I like plants, so I love the pseudo-plant life in this game. That's fairly well done. It could be... They could do a lot of really cool stuff with it, but what they do, as you know, cooler than I would have expected. Also, a neat thing about the vines is that they block out light a little bit. Let's see if there's anything beyond this. I don't think there is, but... Can't hurt to check. Well, there isn't, so we just wasted some time. Isn't that fun, kids? Let's kill these vines for their insolence. Oh, as you can see, the uh, the light of daylight went into the little thingy now that I busted up those vines. There we go. Also, yeah, in the start of the game, I like to carry a bunch of mushrooms with me just as healing snacks. I don't usually bother making them into potions because, well, I'm lazy. Also, I'm going to need more torches, actually. I really like that torches are really easy to make in this game. Um, I pretty much always have slime or gel from the slimes because it's hard to avoid killing slimes really. You could, but I don't know why you would. You end up with uh, too much slime really. And you don't have to grind for it like you pretty much do in uh, Minecraft. Also, if you're going to use a pickaxe as a weapon, Try and be sure you don't accidentally just molest the ground with your pickaxe and just break stuff. Unless you want to just molest the ground and break stuff. Ooh, we got lots of bombs. Bombs, as you might expect, explode and they do damage to stuff. Oh, crap. Wait, I can, I can make that jump. I don't have the best feel for what the, uh, at what point you start to take damage from high falls. Because usually I have an item in my other save file that negates falling damage, so I just fall whenever. But anything more than one screen height, that's probably going to be fatal to me right now. And really, anything about half of a screen height should be pretty safe, I think. I think. Whoa. Like this? If you can't see where you're going to hit the ground... Just avoid it. Also, that might be lava. That, no, that can't be lava. Then what is that? I see light at the bottom there. Which shouldn't... Oh, wow! Oh my god. Oh my god, I can't see. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Crap. 
No, I can't. What? No. Okay, okay. Everything's okay. Just run and scream like a little girl. Oh, hey, that... Oh, God, they're back. Die already. At least you have low defense. Jeez. Okay. Well, we're far down enough that the music changed. I didn't kind of intend to go down this far this quickly, but, um... Okay, those glowing things we saw that looked like horrific monsters, those are called demon altars. They are supposed to spawn in the corruption. I've never seen them outside of it like this before, actually. So, that's interesting. I guess they can spawn anywhere in a cave. I guess. I don't know. Let's make a ladder. Oh, interesting thing to note about the slimes. They are passive by day at on the surface, but underground they are always hostile, so don't think you can just ignore them underground, ever. I think it may be based on the light level, that would make sense, but I'm thinking it also may just be based on the depth. Because at a certain point you're in the underground. I'm not going to bother to get that copper, honestly. Wait, is that... No, that's mud. Wait, that's mud. Mud is similar to dirt, if you didn't if you didn't know that. Um, oh, I guess it did fall that far. Mud can mean the underground jungle is near, but... Ooh, 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 ooh. But we're not deep enough. Well, actually, it can be at this depth, but... There would be other signs that show that we're near the underground jungle, and I, I'm afraid we probably aren't near it. Cobwebs also partially block light. I love the stuff that partially blocks light in this game. It's a really neat touch. Also, I love the iron ore because it helps me live by giving me nice things. I like nice things. This is why I can have nice things. And I'm very proud of myself for that fact. But that's all there looks to be in here. Also, an odd thing, when your torch goes inside of a wall, because the, the light projects less, because, you know, it pierces... W light does pierce solid blocks, but only a little. So that's the reason behind that effect. I also love the character's jump height in this game. It's fabulous. Alrighty. So these are demon altars. You can't break them. If you try to break them, I think they kill you, actually, so I'm not going to show you that. Um, but demon altars with certain items gotten from certain enemies, you can spawn boss versions of those enemies. Like uh, those eyes that we fought, the uh, demon eyes. If you get ten lenses from them, you can actually summon a giant eye and fight it. I am nowhere near ready to fight that enemy, though. I'm nowhere near ready to fight any of the bosses, actually. I could block off that passage up there, but I'm far too lazy, so we're just going to hope that slime never gets down here. Um, you're not helping, Mr. Yellow Slime. The cats are fighting. Um, as you can tell, there are quite a few different slime colors. They all have slightly different stats. The toughest ones are called... Um, the toughest ones are transparent slimes. Oh my god. Okay, yeah, that's what what I was talking about, about you not wanting sand to fall on your head. Very nearly did not realize that sand was going to fall on my head. Oh god. Okay, scratch that. We are going to block off that passage there. And we're just going to exit here. I do love that about this game too, you can just manufacture your own exits pretty easily. And that's all because, you know, it's the 2D view and you can see through walls. So, there doesn't need to be a clear path. And you can escape a room without just blindly tunneling. You can see, oh, there's a wall, or there's a passageway over here. I'll just dig into it. Stupid slime. You just hop over there, buddy. Also, once you start to reach a certain depth, you start seeing a lot more pools of water. And then, 
Okay, there's basically a several layers of the world. The top one is the sky, obviously. And then there's ground level, which is pretty much the same thing as the sky in terms of layer. You know, all above ground stuff. And then there's the dirt layer. Once you're at the dirt layer, you see this background here with dirt and stones in it. Below this, there's a stone layer that's pretty much just the same background, but gray. So, you know, stone and all that. And the stone layer is, I think, the deepest. It's... So there's the sky and the dirt layer about the same height. You now they're a few hundred blocks tall, I think. And then the stone layer is like two or three times that size, I think. And in the stone layer, there's a layer of water areas with lots of big pools of water. And then below that, there's an area with lots of big pools of lava, uh, actually magma. And then below that, there's the underworld, which is under the world, I suppose. That might be considered a spoiler, I guess, but I wouldn't really think so. So if you don't want to have known that, just unhear what I just said. You know, surely that can't be too hard. Oops. Oh my god. Oh my god. Can't see. Can't see. Oh, iron. It was all worth it. I regret nothing. Ooh, and copper. I regret even less than nothing. Copper is normally pretty useless, but uh, actually what am I saying? It's, well, I can make some iron. My first set of armor is usually iron. I mean copper. You need a lot of a material to make armor out of it. Usually you can make enough, you can get enough iron to make tools pretty quickly, but not enough to make a full set of armor. So I usually stick to a full set of copper armor at the very start. Would you slimes stop interrupting in my business? It's really getting bothersome. Come on. There you go. I hope you like seeing me mine, because that's pretty much what the game is at this point, unfortunately. It gets more ex the f it gets more exciting later, and that's you know, that's the fun thing and everything, but it also doesn't let you see how deep the game is. At this point, really it does look like a Minecraft clone, but there's you know, there's a layer of polish and end game stuff that's way beyond anything that's offered in Minecraft or Infamine or anything like that. But at the moment we're just at the random exploring and mining minerals crap. But you will see. Oh! Another nice thing um, in the whole Minecraft comparison. I'm sorry to be bringing this up every single video like five times. I will eventually stop I'm sure, but at the start you know I kind of have to address the similarity to Minecraft, but um, I do love, I love the fact that your tools and stuff don't break. Because that gives you a real sense of progress, you know. Um, you know, once I get a new kind of pick, I'm like, oh, it's, mining is faster and easier forever. I just actually accomplished something. Not, oh yeah, I just made a diamond pickaxe, it's going to break in eight seconds. Diamond's a bad example, because diamond pickaxes actually last for a fair while, but most of the other tools in Minecraft just break pathetically quickly, and I have to make a ton of them. Ooh, Sapphire. They're, I believe, oh my god, you. Oh, son of a butt. Oh, crap. I hate these things. We're we're gonna pretend it's not there. Okay. Those don't have much health, but it's very hard to hit them. Um, well, it's not very hard, but I, I'm not very well equipped to do so. That was a giant earthworm. We saw one of those before, I believe. They're really easy to kill, but at first you just panic because what the hell? How do you hurt that? And I usually just spam a quick weapon like this pickaxe and hope it dies and with the giant earthworm it really does work there are some that are a bit harder and you have to actually use some tr strategery but not so much with that guy I don't even see what I'm getting out of these pots I see I have a lot of bombs 
let's actually let's scope out this room. Ooh, this is a good excuse to use a bomb. Let's see, to use a bomb, you just equip it like an item. You pretty much use the same controls for everything. It's a bad. You can't control where you throw them very well. At all. You kidding? Would you just set the bomb down? Thank you. Also, don't be within its splash radius. Um, the damage drop off is really quick, but they hurt a lot. For the longest time, I thought TNT was harmless to the player character. Um, so, because I was using it for a certain mining task, you'll see later what I needed those for. And then I once got caught in the splash damage and I took like 200 damage <laughs> instantly. So, yeah. Dead Space 2 actually does that with the extremely high damage but short fall off. I kind of prefer that to an extremely wide radius and long fall off of damage in uh, explosions. Because, you know, when you're out of the splash damage, you know, you're out of the visible explosion, you're out of it, period. There's no massive knockback radius, and I kind of like that. Also, more of this stuff. I'm not sure why I even made this sword. I think I would be happier without it. Topaz! Excellent! I did not expect to be getting gems this early. Unfortunately, I can't use these gems, but they're so pretty that I can't not mine them. They have a use. They make weapons, which makes them useless to me, because I hate the weapons in this game. Oh, I did want to like specifically stress this. Um, if any developer for the game watches this, please, please, please make almost all or all of the weapons auto-fire when you just hold the damn button. You know, gameplay-wise, you're just making me spam the click button. You're not really making it, you know, you're not balancing the weapon. You're just making it annoying. And I suppose that is a way to make me, you know, avoid certain weapons, but it's not a good way. It's just annoying all around. You should please just not do that. Oh my god, you again. Okay, we're gonna... If you stay out in an open area, you can see where the digging enemies are coming from. That helps a lot in fighting them. Sometimes they hesitate, though, which really annoys me. Okay, come on. Sometimes they go right up like they're going to attack you and- see? They hesitate. I think maybe you have to be in a certain radius, like they have a patrol radius, and they don't want to go outside of it. Come on, be- get brave. This was a terrible idea. This is the worst idea I've ever had in my life. You know what? You know what? Have bombs. Have- oh, god. Bombs! Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, those do 100 damage, so pretty good early weapons, and you can get them just in pots. So, if you have an enemy that's causing some real trouble, you can use them. Just be careful, because they do destroy a small amount of blocks. It's not a big deal, though. It's not like TNT and Minecraft. <gasps> pretty. Amethysts. Wow, I have, what, three different types of gems already. See, that's the thing I don't like about the pots is I don't even notice what I get out of them. Because, you know, you're standing so close when you break them, you just instantly get whatever they drop. Also, okay. Torch. There. Platform. Okay. You can use these to slow your drop. Or slow your roll, as it were. I'm just gonna make a ladder. Very good. If you stay away from the pot, you can actually see what it drops. Very good! Lesser healing potion. Oh, I have a few of these. Hmm. It'd be kind of a waste to use them right now. But later on, they become so abundant, I think. I'm just gonna wait until I take another hit and I'll use one. They heal 100 HP. They only have 100 HP. Here we go. Here is the stone layer. You can just tell by the grayer background here. Also, this mud has a few purposes beyond being just, you know, wet dirt. So, later on you'll see a few of them. 
it's not very relevant now. It is just a nice touch that, you know, it's a little different ground. Also, I really love how the ground bits meld into each other. Like, you can see this dirt um, melds with the stone. Lots of certain blocks do that and certain blocks don't. It gives it a nice organic feeling. See? It just gives a nice organic mix of the rock and the other stuff. And the minerals do it too. As you start to mine it, that sort of breaks away so you can see that you know you're taking the stuff out. It's it's just nice. Oh my god. I don't think the earthworms even drop anything. So that sucks. They probably drop money. I think everything oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, no not no, no, run. Okay. Okay. What are we gonna do about you? Get into the water. Come here. Can you make it up here? Oh my god! Yes, it can! Oh god. Okay. Okay, into here. Those are black slimes. That's, that's not a good thing, actually. Go into the water. Go into the water now! Oh my god. No. 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 Heal. Oh my god. No. Okay, okay. Bombs away! Uh, bombs away! Go! Die! No! Okay. Crap. Oh well. That was a pretty good run. Now, let's appreciate another change from Minecraft that I really, really enjoy. Because we have a lot of iron. So in Minecraft, we would have to take 18 hours and make a bunch of iron ingots. But in this game, you just scroll all the way down to iron block. Actually, silver bar. And you just click it, and there you go. You can right-click and make like a thousand of them at once. Look at that. So quick. So efficient. I love it. I love it. Okay, here's what I was talking about, about taking a lot of freaking stuff. Wait. Can I make a copper bar? Oh, right. I have to scroll down to the copper items. I should have enough to make another piece of copper armor. Is that all the copper I have? Apparently so. And we're going to make... Oh, I have enough to make the full set of copper armor. This game also gives you benefits for having a full set of armor. It, get, it tells you the set bonus when you're wearing the full set. So you get an extra two defense here. Which pretty much it gives you a 50% defense boost in this case. So definitely worth it. Worth getting the last piece of the same kind of armor. In fact, it's... Enough of a boost that um, it wouldn't be worth it to make a single piece of iron equipment yet. But instead, we are going to make an iron pick first. Wait, I can't make a silver pick, can I? I hope I can't, actually. Oh my god, that I do not care for. When I'm clicking around in the inventory screen, I drop items. Well, I use whatever my current equipped thing is. In that case, it was a bomb. If it's like a weapon or something, it's usually not a big deal, but I've accidentally used healing potions or dynamite, you know, random stuff. This is the first time I've thrown explosive, actually. I'm very glad that was the first time I've done that. Should I? Yeah, sure. These aren't the... This isn't a big upgrade, just going from copper to iron. Should I bother? Silver bow. No, I won't bother with getting an iron weapon. Unless it's fair. The problem with the iron short sword... Um, you know what, fuck it, I'll show you. Go away. Is it stabs. It gives you nice attack speed, but you have to click spam even more, for one thing. But it doesn't give you the nice arced attack that you usually get with the weapon, like, you know, with the broadsword. So, it's very awkward to attack certain enemies with this. It's just generally very awkward, actually. And I, you know. This was the first weapon I got was a short sword. And I pretty much immediately stopped using it. I guess this was the first case that I explored, wasn't it? We'll see if it was a dead end or not, I suppose. Well, actually, we'll do that. Oh. Before I forget, I'm going to inspect this thing. 
Okay, you can mine like that, but it doesn't work very well, so it's just not. We're going to see if there's a room in here, and then we're going to end the video, because I kind of missed... Me dying would have been a pretty good time to end the video, and I didn't, because I'm a dumbass. But we have copper, so... Copper makes it all better. Actually, we have a very small amount of copper. And actually, I have almost no use for copper anymore, so... Not sure why I got excited. But for a brief moment there, I was excited. Oh well. Next time we will peek back in this cave and see if there's anything worth exploring, I guess. So I'm sure it wasn't a complete dead end, was it? I don't know. Next time!